A lot of people aren't going to like this video and I've been thinking about whether or not I should do it or not and I thought, you know what, this is what I think, this is really important and I really want to share it with you guys because I think it's going to make a huge difference to how you practice. So one of the first piano teachers that I had was like, he was a little bit crazy and he used to drink like lots of coffee and lots of coke and was always like super hyper and his brain was always like really really wired but he was an awesome pianist and I remember one day in a piano lesson, it was one of my first piano lessons we were practicing this piece, the Aeolian harp, and it, it goes like this. Oh, I just set off Siri. <laughs> anyway, so it goes like that, and it's like this really fast piece, and I was new, and I could not wrap my fingers around it. I was like, how on earth am I supposed to play a piece like that? I was like barely playing Mary Had a Little Lamb at that point, and was like, holy cow, that is insane. And so he said to me to practice it this way, right? And a lot of you aren't going to like this, but I'm going to show you anyway. This is what he told me to do. to play the whole thing really loud and really obnoxious and when he first told me to do that I was like what are you, are you kidding me you want me to play like that that sounds terrible but he said to me he told me this story right how once he was practicing in a practice room this way doing really loud obnoxious practice okay he wasn't focusing on the music at all he just wanted to have the notes under his fingers and he wanted his fingers to feel like really alive and somebody was actually at the door listening to him practicing thinking oh my gosh, that guy, that guy is like terrible. I can't believe how bad his practice is. And then they even like went around and started telling people in the building. Anyway, he went up and did his performance, all right, later on that night. And this person didn't know who it was and was like, oh my goodness, what an incredible pianist. And even went up to him afterwards and said, wow, you are an amazing pianist. Like, I can't believe how amazing that was. And then they said to him, by the way, you should have heard this person practicing earlier on. They were like doing really loud, obnoxious practice and it was terrible. And he just sort of smiled and laughed because he thought to himself, that was me. So the moral of the story here is that even though you're doing loud, obnoxious practice and it might not sound very useful, it can actually be really helpful. And here is why. The reason is our brain only has a certain amount of brain power that we can put our attention onto. And if we're putting all of our attention onto the music, then we haven't got much brain power left to concentrate on the notes, right? And other stuff like that. So what my piano teacher did was he completely removed the music from his brain. He's like, I don't want to think about the music. I want to keep the music fresh. And the only thing he focused on was the notes. So he was putting all of his focus and attention onto playing the right notes, which is why he got me to practice this way. Because he knew that by doing that, I was strengthening my fingers and only putting my attention onto learning the notes. And then later on, he was then able to layer the music on top of that, okay? I hadn't put in any bad habits by practicing that way because it was just purely practicing the same way, obnoxious, and then he could layer the music on top of that, like... He was able to um, get some music out of me and I remember the first time I played this with the music because I practiced the obnoxious way for weeks. The first time I did it musically, I, I just broke down crying. It was like, I can't believe I can do it this way. I, I can't believe I can make these beautiful sounds. Like, where is this even coming from? It's like it was so easy for me to play musically because he tore away everything else and just let me focus on the notes. So a lot of teachers will get really mad at you and be like, oh, why aren't you playing musically? I want it. it has to sound beautiful all the time. But you know what? Maybe that's not the best advice. Maybe the best advice is to completely suck out the music, play it with just good technique, and then inject the music back in later on. That's what I've started doing every now and then with my practice. And I gotta tell you, it's made a massive difference. And it's opened up my mind to be it's opened up my mind to be able to focus on the music. So let me just go over this one more time using my picture of the brain here. Yeah, by the way, this is a brain. <laughs> so by putting all of your attention onto playing the right notes, eventually this gets into your subconscious, right? So it's almost like this circle, this is if this is our focus gets pushed into your subconscious and it becomes really, really easy, right? And then later on, if you've pushed all of this into your subconscious, that big circle 
you have all this space in your brain to make that big circle the music. So now you're playing and concentrating on the music because everything else, all the notes, um, all the technique has been pushed into your subconscious. It's a magical feeling and I hope that you can give it a try and feel it too. I know that you'll notice the difference. So just a different perspective there guys and girls. I'm not saying you should practice like this all the time. Obviously at some point you need to inject the music, but give it a try. I think you'll find that it makes a big difference in your playing. My name's Luke Diebold, I am a piano teacher, and hey, I've got heaps of free videos like this, so if you wanna click on the link attached to this video, you can check out a whole bunch of my other free stuff. All right, see you on the other side.